Noel Mead has been um, booked to, to appear on this show uh, all week, and I don't think we were expecting this turn turn of events. Noel, um, good morning to you. Good morning. Um, how damaging do you think this is to to uh, racing, not just in Ireland but uh, around the world? Obviously, any time that racing is put into the media with uh, the connection to drugs, or it is damaging to racing, all well, certainly in Ireland and anywhere it has. But I have to say that the situation we're in at the moment is kind of uh, like a forest fire, if you like, because every time somebody says drug, it's in the paper. Paul Kimmage is a sensationalist journalist. Uh, Jim Bulger has been gone online and said that there has, there's going to, we're going to find a, Lan, a Lance Armstrong. We haven't found a Lance Armstrong. We haven't actually found anything as such by, with all the testing that has been done. No horse has come up positive. Our horses have raced the whole way around the world in America, in Australia, uh, in Hong Kong, all over. They've passed all tests in England, France. They've passed all tests. Yet Jim has come along and stated this and sort of threw it, threw a, it up in the air. And everyone that thinks that comes along and says anything gets into the paper. Now every journalist picks it up. Now what happened the other day is probably what they need to do is say what the, what the drugs they found. Because when they come along and say they found drugs, it could be a bottle of Ingham ice. It could be anything that wasn't labelled. It doesn't necessarily mean when they found drugs that they found it. It could be a box of Panadols for horses, if you know what I mean. So it's, it's a very loose situation to say that they found drugs. Um, I know John Warwick. John Warwick treated uh, Go Native when he got a leg after the champion hurdle. He was treated by Beth for... Uh, 18 months and he didn't come sound and he was given up on and he went to John Warwick and John Warwick treated him and he came sound and he actually raced again after that and he wouldn't have raced again but for the fact of the treatment he got from John Warwick. Now a lot of people have used John Warwick for the same reason. Uh, I don't know anything about what other treatment he does, that's the only time I used him for anything and I know that that's what most people did use him for. Maybe he treats for something else, I don't know but I think until there is, uh, as you say in the start, a little more meat on the bones. Like coming from the likes of Paul Kimmich is uh, is not any time that Paul Kimmich gets a, gets uh, a, any chance to to write up racing into a, into a bad light or anything. It doesn't have to be racing. That's what he does. That's that's the nature of the beast. So I think at the minute it would be very remiss of anybody to say that there was drugs found in Ireland the other day. Uh, Noel, in, in, in Paul Kimmage's defence, not that he needs me to defend him, but it, just reading his very extensive report here, a lot of it is simply reporting the questions that he's asked trainers and reporting their answers. And that in itself doesn't make for particularly pretty reading, as there are some trainers, he says do you know John Warwick? And they say, no, I've never heard of him. And then he says, well, here's your horse box going into his stable. And they say, I've got no comment to make. Do you not agree that that doesn't exactly look great for the industry as a whole when people are denying something? If there's nothing to be denied, why would you deny it? Well, <clears throat> as I said to you, John Warwick treated a, uh, treated a horse for me. And in fact, he probably treated two or three horses with legs for me. But it, what, the highest profile one was going to hate him. Um, I'm sure that's what happened. And I'd say, to be honest with you, uh, people are, they don't want to be associated with the situation that's uh, been talked about on, look, on Sunday. They don't want their name coming out to say that they had horses in John Warwick's so other because anyone might think this. But I can tell you that I have never uh, heard of him treating any horses to give them drugs for anything for, uh, to enhance their, their performance. And, I, to my knowledge, and from I've been chairman of the race, the race Horse Trainers Association for quite some time, I've never, I've never come across anything like that. And and most of those, most of the things that happen in racing, a smaller country than England, most things that happen come to the surface uh, 
eventually. I mean, do you think Ted Walsh has got the right approach here? You, you basically say, right, this is the deal. This is why I was here. And you know, try and clarify the situation rather than to render it less clear. Absolutely. And I think that that's why they, IHRB should say what they found. And, and, and say, and clear it up straight away before it goes any further. And if they have found something, fair enough, let them say it. But uh, that's the problem. Well, the problem here is, is, is uh, people jump to the wrong, uh, the, the, to the, the wrong idea straight away. You know, this, this is what happens. I, I, I spoke to Ted the other day about it and I said, said to me, he said to me, look, no, and he says, I prefer I wasn't there. He said, but I was there and that's what happened. He says, I was getting our scanned. And he said that. Now, I don't, I didn't see today's, uh, uh, article by, um, by, um, in the, in the independent, but, but, uh, I know that's what Ted was saying. I know Liam was there the same. Liam was actually dropping a horse off for somebody else. Yeah. And, and he asked Lynn Hillier if he could run his horse later that day. And, and she didn't allow him to because the investigation was ongoing. But I'm uh, led to believe that the owner of that horse is, uh, quite happy with the with the with the situation. So you believe it's a situation the IHRB needs to take more more ownership of. Does it does it worry you that they're slight, somewhat latecomers to this party? That this is a, an investigation that's being driven from outside racing, and the IHRB are really only in on the coattails of this? Look, the one thing I would like to impress on you and everybody else is the trainers in Ireland want us to play on a level playing field. We all want to play. We all want to play. We don't want anyone to have any, to have something that the others haven't got. Like every time, uh, that, that, uh, horse goes to the races, it's, it's only fair that everyone was playing with the same that what he gets is feed and, 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 and water and he does not get, uh, uh, that someone hasn't got a, hasn't got a leg up from something else. And, and, uh, that's what that's what we want. So the testing, as far as the testing is concerned, we're delighted to see tests and we're delighted to see people investigating these things and see what happens. But to my knowledge, they haven't found anything of any substance yet. No, you're a you're a, a senior a senior figure. People look to a hugely respected multiple champion trainer. Can can you give me an idea of the of the general feeling amongst the training fraternity uh, in Ireland, uh, amongst the trainers in Ireland? Um, as to as to how they are are being viewed at the moment. Well, I think most trainers, and and uh, I say this now. I know he's not going to like me hearing me saying it. Most trainers are very annoyed with Jim Bolger. Uh He's got a chance to stand up and say what what he said, and to to if he has anything to let it be known. He was asked by the Arachnids to go in and make comment. He refused that. He's he's just talking as. Aidan described him as really pub talk, and that's what he's saying. He hasn't, he doesn't appear to have anything. If he has, he hasn't told anyone. So everybody, as far as I can see, and any trainer I have met, is very annoyed with Jim over that. Uh, I think most trainers in Ireland are very annoyed with the way the whole thing has been has been uh, treated by the media, by Paul Kimmage. Uh, Everybody that, as I say again, that I know, feel that racing in Ireland is straight and that there's nothing going on. Look, we, Jim came along and said that uh, he felt he wasn't playing against uh, on a level playing field. That would suggest that the horse is trained by the top people. And when we talk about the top people, we have to talk about Aidan, Joseph, Dermot, Willie, Henry, Gordon, they're the six top people in Ireland, right? That they are, if, if Jim, Jim is suggesting that they're not playing, they're not playing with square. Well, to my knowledge, that's a load of nonsense. Well, you know, you know Jim Bolger. Well, I, I know Jim Bolger reasonably well, Noel, and I've, I've spoken to him on this subject. It, would it be worth his while to put his, neck on the block like this unless he felt deep down somewhere that he was he was onto something is it is it, is it coming from the right place do you think Even i don't if you know think where it's misguided i don't know where it's coming from i can't understand it i can't understand like why he would say something like this and then back away and not give and not give uh uh give um 
put, put as you say again, meat on the bones to her or fill, fill in the gaps on what, where he's coming from. But why he said it, I do not know. Um, I'd say most of us or anyone I know is very annoyed about what he has said. Um, no, I appreciate your your thoughts on that, and um, clearly this wasn't the way I expected to be uh, chatting to you this morning because uh, you, you've got a, an important runner at, at Cheltenham. The horses are, are running extremely well. You're not you're not with us at, at, at Cheltenham this afternoon. Where, where are you going to be today? I'd be in Punchestown today. We have one in Cheltenham, three in uh, Punchestown, and three in Cork. So um, I took the easy option. I'm going to Punchestown. And you won't mind where you're watching if, if Jesse Evans wins the, the Great Wood Hurdle this afternoon. The subject of a, a significant gamble yesterday. Can you see where that's coming from? Um, not really, no, to be honest. Um, other than the fact that some of the, like David Jennings has tipped him and a few people have tipped him, I suppose. There's quite a big syndicate on him, Tomas Singleton from Cork, and his, uh, uh, he's a legion of fans. Tomas, and they're all over there. So whether that had something to do with it or not, I don't know. But I got a text from him last night to say that he was very short priced. Now, I look, he's he's a nice horse. He was fourth in the Galway Hurdle. He didn't win the Galway Hurdle. He's plenty of weight. He has a fighting chance. I mean, and just keeping him to the flat the last couple of runs was that just simply a question of of not exposing him any more to the to the hurdles handicapper. Well, we didn't want to be winning. A, uh, you know, if we're going to win a handicap, we're going to try and win a good one. Uh, every time you win a handicap, you go up. So, if uh, he's high enough as he is at the moment, so this looked like a uh, a race to have a have a go at. The, it, the, with owns five pound off, and sort of gives him a uh, a good chance, and he doesn't have to give away that much weight. He's 9-2 to two at the moment in what looks an incredibly competitive race. There's not been any more rain at Cheltenham overnight. Is this a horse that wants pretty decent ground, though? Yeah, I'd say the ground would be perfect. Uh, he doesn't like it too heavy. Uh, I, I don't like it fast, but he doesn't like it too heavy. I'd say the ground should be OK. He's a little bit of a nervous horse, but he has been over there since Wednesday. Uh, he went over with some of Gordon's, and uh, they, I sent him over early, and... Uh, he settled in well, and, and Emma Murray, who's with him, is delighted with him. She said he's he's settled in really well, and he's been down on the middle of the track every day, and she's had him out, and sort of. And she said he settled down well, which was the idea. We were hoping that that might happen with him when he'd be over there for a while. Uh, Noel, you're quite well represented, as you were saying, at, at, at Punchestown today. Um, a six shooter looks to have a pretty good chance. Yeah, he was very impressive in, in Galway. I impressed me, and I suppose he impressed a good few people. Uh, we've always liked this horse. Uh, he was very, uh, he won as a four-year-old his first two runs on, uh, in bumpers, and uh, he won his first run last year. Ran a little bit disappointing after that, but he, he was very shelly last year. He's, he's filled out a bit. Not a huge horse, but uh, he was very impressive in the way he took defences in Galway. Ho- hopefully, uh, but he'll he'll he'll, uh, he'll do that again today. He's he's schooled well since, and uh, despite the fact we have a change of jockey, as Sean is injured, uh, he has Brian on him today. So uh, hopefully he'll jump as well as he did today. Um, the strip is a help, and uh, might like the ground just a little bit softer than it is. But but look, it's 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 the ground is okay. It's 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 uh, it, it's uh, good to yielding and and. Uh, there's been plenty of uh, mist on that over the, yesterday and today, so hopefully it'll keep it at that. No, it's not going to ever escape your notice because of your, your such close associations to the track and its um, its proximity to you that that Navin is celebrating its its centenary uh, at the moment. It's a it's a very special place for those those who haven't been, and quite unlike any other race course in Ireland, uh, you must be very proud of your association with it and the fact that it's it's got to a hundred years. Absolutely, uh, I'm chairman of Navin, which is which is uh, fabulous to be chairman in the in the um, times that's in it and uh, coming up on its hundredth celebration. Uh, now, as I say, chairman, I'm very much the quiet end of the thing. Aidan, uh, Aidan is doing the is the manager, and he does that. Does the they've been put on the staff there have been doing a great job putting putting this these celebrations together. Um, yeah, Navin went through a, a dodgy spell uh, 25 years ago or so, just before the HRI was was established, when the racing board was in charge of it. 
it almost got closed down, which would have been a disaster because it's, uh, I, I think you are there, Nick, it's, it's one of the finest tracks in Ireland. Yeah. It's one of the fairest, uh, big galloping track. Uh, you can bring Arsene Avon and, uh, first time out and you can expect him to run to his merit because he doesn't just two big long straights down the back and up the straight and two very gentle bends and uh, it's it's a good place to bring one it's it's tough the the, the finish is you know we rise for the last four and a half and it's it's a tough finish so if you get beaten in Navin you get beaten because you're not good enough uh, the, all the good horses have been there, like uh, starting off with Arkel. Like, I mean, he started his winning spree in, in Navin in a three mile maiden hurdle, uh, when he wasn't even favoured. Uh, but, um, every, every good horse you can think of has raced around, has raced around Navin and trainers in general, jump trainers would love to bring the horses there to run them at any time because it's, you know, it's a good grass track and you get when the, when it's a great test. I, I love my trip. I remember coming to see uh, to see you. I think when you had Go Native, uh, he was heading toward the Champion Hurdle, and we we went there on on Boyne Hurdle Day and had a had a fantastic day there. So you know, I would thoroughly recommend it to anyone who hasn't uh, been to Navan, particularly if you're in the UK and you're heading over for a trip to Ireland uh, to visit the races. I would uh, I would put it on your on your bucket list. Uh, no, you mentioned all those great names of Irish racing a few moments ago, and you mentioned Henry and Gordon and Willie and Aidan and Joseph. Um, you were too modest to put yourself uh, among that list, but it's been a it's been a more than productive um, couple of years for you. And and interestingly, a lot of success where you started on the flat. You know, Royal Ascot winning trainer in the seventies, back on the flat and jumping. How much are you enjoying um, this particular phase of your career? Uh, very much, yes, very much. I I. Uh... Well, they're much easier to train. I've, I've always been slagging the flat trainers about this. I said, if you can train jumpers, if the dog will train in flat options, they get away with more of the tra- flat trainers. So the less injuries and easier to, uh, not as much work with flat horses. So I do enjoy it. Um, it's just over the last couple of years, Nick, it's become very, very difficult to buy uh, jumping horses. And, uh, for that reason, we changed some of the, some of the around. We sort of probably next year will be 50 50, uh, with the amount of flat horses and jumpers we'll have. It just about three years ago, I started buying a few and a couple of pals of mine, myself bought a few, uh, I had shares in them and we've been lucky too. We've been lucky with a few horses that have, uh, both been sold or uh, we're lucky enough with a couple that we kept as well, you know. And I think it's it's well worth having a look back at, at Helvick Dreams win in the in the Tattersall's Gold Cup. I can see a smile breaking out on your on your face again. Uh, the form's not done too badly subsequently, has it? No, it was the fourth time he had run against Broome that year. Uh, we fancied him the first day in Nace, an enlisted race, and, and Broome absolutely dialed around. And it was the only bad run that horse, uh, my horse had all year. And then he went to the car and the ground was good. And he finished fourth, and uh, then he went. He went. It was back to the car again. He, he he finished second to him, I think. And Colin came in to me the day of the Tavistock Gold Cup into the into the um, parade ring, and he said to me, "No, he says we could beat this for the today." He said, "I," but he said, "Don't expect me to be there early." He said, "I'll I'll just be there at the death," and he did exactly that. He said he he. Uh, sat behind him and just he said I went too soon the last day he said I shouldn't have went to him as soon as I did and we had a lot of rain overnight and the ground was soft he's, he grows a leg when he gets soft ground and he's he just he gave him a peach of a ride he's like I heard you talking about him there on the shows recently about Colin Keane how good is Colin Keane mm. Colin Keane is 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 one of the best flat jockeys that have arrived in Ireland since well, obviously we have to, can't forget Pat and and and, and uh, Johnny and Mick, but Mick Canan to me was the best flat jockey I've ever seen, and Colin is getting up there. His he, his uh, performances uh, this year have been incredible. Um, who's the best jumps jockey riding at the moment? Actually, uh, look, I suppose to be honest, we'd have to we'd have to think Davy is is probably as good a jump jockey as we've had. Like he's he's a very clever, brilliant horseman. Uh, Jack is Jack Kennedy is very very good. Uh, 
Rachel, what can we say about Rachel? I mean, she just gets better and better and better, and she's she's up there. Um, I think the man I'm using today has come right back to himself, uh, Brian Cooper. I was watching him riding in, in Sligo um, a few, about a month ago, and it just said to himself, that man is back where he was. He's, he's, his hands are back. He's, he's absolutely, he was going around for a couple of years there, and his face was drawn from pain. But the pain is all gone, and he looks like a fresh young fellow again, and he's riding very well. But um, the the it's a very it's a very competitive situation in Ireland with jump jock- with jump jockeys. If you're talking about Ireland only, I suppose you are. Um, it's a very competitive situation. But but uh, uh, any of those ones are that my own man is a good rider as well. Uh, Sean, unfortunately, is out for six weeks, and uh, but it's it's. We have a couple of young fellas coming along now who are starting to look as if they're very good. In all that, I forgot about Paul Townend, of course. But Darrell Keith is is a special is a special talent, and Jordan Gainford is probably one of the guys that you're going to hear an awful lot more about as well. He's still slim and five. He's injured at the moment. We've we have a lot of talent coming through, both on the flat and over jumps. Well, uh, no, you've been very diplomatic there. I'll, I'll, I, I, but I still remember. I still remember your first answer. It's the one that will le- live longest for us. Um, as far as this season's concerned, for you, who do you think is going to be your star, your flag bearer? Who do you have the highest hopes for? Well, I would hope that Big Canadian will get back up there. He was. We always thought when he'd go jumping fences, he'd be a bit better than jumping hurdles. Maybe he didn't get home in the in the stairs hurdle over three. In the stairs hurdle, he we thought jumping the second last that he was getting up, he was going to get to Florian Porter too soon, but he actually by the time he jumped the last Florian Porter run right away, he didn't seem to get home over the trip. So I'd be very hopeful that he'd be he'll be uh, a, a top horse. Noel, thank you so much for your time uh, this morning. Uh, best of luck this afternoon. Thank you very much. Okay, Noel Mead, multiple uh, champion trainer and.